let's continue talking about that family of materials that we know that we term elastic materials. Elastic linear elastic materials. So let's talk about the theory of linear elasticity. Never forget that we add the uh, qualification of linear because, as I told you, there are other theories which are extensive to nonlinear cases. But this is the simplest one and maybe the most relevant for us. So the, the concept of elasticity comes from Hooke, the famous uh, researcher, British, in 1660, in which uh, he, uh, by the way, he was, this guy was a very interesting person. I recommend you to read his uh, biography if you have the opportunity to, 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 to do it. He did some experiments, which are sketched here in terms of bars of different lengths that were subjected to um, axial forces. And he realized that when doing that, there was a proportionality of the force and the increment of length of these bars. They were, in fact, rather than these were rods, rods which are loaded vertically. But anyway, he found that proportionality. Okay. And rather than that, he looked then for different um, uh, considering the sections of the, of, the, of the bar A and the length of the bar L, he found that there was a proportionality between the force divided by the area and the increment of length divided by the original length of the bar. And he found that that constant that kept the proportionality was just depending on the material. So for the same material, Different bars, different lengths, different cross sections uh, provided the same constant. So now, on the light of what we already know, this F divided by the cross sections can be stated as the stress, the axial stress in the bar. And this incremental increment of length divided by length, assuming that the bar is subjected to constant uh, stretching. So it's the stretch, the sorry, the unit elongation, which in the context of infinitesimal theory stands from the uniaxial strain. So this is the representation in the space sigma epsilon of this law for uniaxial cases. The stresses are proportional to the strains, and the constant of propor proportionality is what we call now the Young's model. By the way, Young didn't have anything to do with that. He took the name, or it was given to him the name, but he didn't do anything on this field, at most. So this is the Hooke's law that you already know, that states that stresses and strain are proportional, and the constant of proportional, which is the slope of the stress-strain law, which is linear, that's what we call linear elasticity, it's con is constant, E is constant, it doesn't depend neither on the only depends on the material, but essentially it doesn't depend on the stress and the amount of stress that we apply, nor on the amount of strain that we apply. So just the constant, the, the, the slope of this law that starts at zero, is just a constant that depends only, only, only on the material. Okay. So well, this gave rise to a lot of developments. So let's see how finally this concept that the stress is proportional to the strains which were initi was initially derived by Hooke to uniaxial, so uniaxial stress strain cases, can be is generalized in the general theory of linear elasticity. It's this way. So now we assume that the full stress tensor, Cauchy stress tensor, is proportional to the infinitesimal strain tensor through a set of constants. If this is a second order tensor, and this is a second order tensor, this is a double dot product, this is a fourth order tensor. So there are four indices here. So the index, index web version of this uh, law here is sigma ij, 
is equal to C I J K L time epsilon K L. This is a, a still a, a relationship establishing proportionality. So if we double the strains, we double the stresses. If we triple the stresses, the strains, we have triple the stresses and so on. Okay? But it's a generalization to multi-axial cases. The, the, the point is that, as in that case, that this tensor, fourth order tensor, doesn't depend on anything else than the material. So in this regard, the amount of the strains, there is no strain here. Could, could be, but it's, there is no. If there were strains here, we would talk, we would talk about nonlinear third elasticity. Because the, so to call, the, the, the slope, which is played in this case by this, depend on the strains. Okay? But there is not, it's not the case. So this is constant for the same material, and this is what is called the generalized Hooke's law. So let's talk a little bit about these constants here. In principle, this is a fourth order tensor. So how many different components are there in a fourth order tensor? So just being, since i, j, k, l can take three values, the number of points that we have here, the number of, of summons that we have here, or the, the possibility values g i, c, i, j, k, l is just three to the power of four, so 81. Which is a lot, by the way. This implies that, that would imply that we have to identify for every material 81 constants in order to use that material for a model that material via a uh, elastic uh, model, okay? But that's not that like it is. Well, in fact, look, it's not that complex, in fact, because, for instance, this, that is a symmetric tensor. So sigma j should be equal to sigma ji for all cases. And that's also a symmetric tensor. So akl is also 12 lk in all cases. So this implies, after some elaboration, that this tensor, when we just switch some of these indices of this tensor, the result doesn't change. It's what we call, we call minor symmetry. So if we switch ij for ji, the result is the same. And we switch kl for lk, the result is the same. That's what we call minor symmetries. And there are also ma major symmetries that comes from other reasons that we will examine that makes that even if we change the two first indices by the two last indices, so C i j k l and C k l i j, they are also the same. These what are called major symmetries. So due to that, if we make an account of how, what is the reduction on the number of components, different components, that we can have just by considering the symmetries, then this 81 come up to 21, which is a large number here still, but not such an important number. So we can just finish that. In principle, in the general case of an a linear elastic material, the tensor of constitutive elastic constants, which are those constants, is because they are constants once the material is fixed, then are 21 of these constants, okay? Look that, 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 that I didn't say anything about how is that, exactly that, exactly that is a four order a tensor with 21 independent components.